Hi, beautiful friends of Bookish Fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today for another Bookmas video. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to do my final haul of 2023. So this is actually going to be a cumulative haul of all of the books that I've acquired since the last haul that I filmed, which I believe was some point in August, if I remember correctly. So I have a handful of books that I have acquired since then. Now I am going to give a quick disclaimer in that I am filming this somewhat early in December. And the reason for that is because I will be going away. I will be flying home to California around December 19th. And so there will be several days where I am not home to film or edit videos. And so I need to really get all of that done prior to leaving. And so because of that, I'm filming everything as early as I possibly can. And while I'm not necessarily planning on buying myself anything for the remainder of the month, I do know that there are some things that are still on their way to me. For example, the December Fairy Loot box is still on the way to me. And also my box of book subscription is still on its way to me as well. And then I recently participated in a wishlist gifting event. Those books are on their way to me as well. Although I do already know what they are. One is Hostage by Claire McIntosh and the other is Forever Home by Alicia Whistler. So I can at least tell you that I am hauling those in December but the other ones I have no idea what they are so those will be coming into me and I'm just going to say that they are included in this video because they are going to be coming to me in December and like I said I don't really have plans of buying myself any books in December so for the most part all of the books that I'm sharing with you today of course with the exceptions of the ones that are still on their way to me should be it for 2023. And again since the last haul I did was in the August September time frame several of these books you will probably have already seen featured on this channel in some form like maybe I've read them and I've talked about them or things of that nature. So some of these are not going to be new, but some of them I haven't shared yet. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the haul. So the very first books that I have to share with you are the book of the month selections for September, The Intern by Michelle Campbell, which I did read and it was just okay and I'm going to unhaul it. Also The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin, which I also did recently read and I didn't really love this. I think I gave it like a two, 2.5 stars. And so this one is also going to be unhauled. So I don't think I featured these in the unhaul video that I just recently posted live on my channel. So consider this part of that unhaul haul because these will be going up on Pango very shortly. I also have the beautiful Barnes & Noble special edition of Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Now I know y'all have already seen this on my channel because I recently just showed it in my December TBR. This is absolutely stunning. I was so drawn in by this cover and I know a lot of people really really love this story and this is actually on my December TBR as well so hopefully I will be getting into it this month. Next I have The Housemaid Secret by Frieda McFadden. This was sent to me in a recent box of books subscription. They were the ones that actually sent me The Housemaid which I did read. I really enjoyed and I'm excited to get into this one in 2024. I also received both The Friend Zone and The Happy Ever After Playlist, both by Abby Jimenez from a wishlist gifting exchange that I was a part of on Facebook. I have since read The Friend Zone. I read it earlier in December and I really, really loved it. So a review of that will be coming shortly on my channel, but I still have yet to read this one. I also have the beautiful Fairy Loot Special Edition of The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I literally just finished this this morning. So I just finished this story. It is super cute. Look at those lemon sprayed edges. This was an adorable, sweet story that actually kind of deals with time travel in some ways. And and I really enjoyed it for the most part. So I'm glad to have this beautiful special edition. I also picked up Finger Lickin' 15 by Janet Ivanovich because I needed to read this one. I believe it was in October for a Spookopoly prompt. So I went ahead and bought this one since I read the book. I also purchased The Summer Children, which is the third book in the collector series by Dot Hutchinson. This is another one that I read and I wanted to have it on my shelves along with the other two books in the series. Next, I have Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I mentioned this recently in the books that I plan to read by the end of 2023. I originally picked this up because I wanted to revisit the series before the beautiful collection collector's editions came out from Fairy Loot because when I first read this back in 2017 I didn't love it but I've grown drastically as a reader since then and there were a lot of reasons why I didn't appreciate it in 2017 that I don't believe would be an issue now especially if I immersively read this but unfortunately I didn't get around to it. I have since purchased that beautiful Fairy Loot special edition set so I really am hoping that I can revisit this soon make sure that I love it and if I don't then I guess I'm selling that set but I do have this for now on my TBR. Next I have the fifth book in the True North series by Serena Bowen. This was on a TBR a couple of months ago and since I did listen to the story and I wanted to have it as part of the collection to go along with the other series so I did pick it up. Same thing with An Unreliable Truth by Victor Methos. This is the third book in the Desert Plain series. As of this moment this is the only other book that's in the series that I needed to read so I'm currently caught up in the series. This is a series of legal thrillers that for the most part I think are done exceptionally well so I'm happy to read more from Victor Methos in the future but like I said I did read this for a TBR and I wanted to go ahead and have it for my collection with the other two books in the series. Then I have Crazy Stupid Bromance 
Bromance and Isn't It Bromantic. These are the last two books in the Bromance Book Club series by Lissa K. Adams that I need to read. So once I finish these two, I will have officially completed or caught up in the series. I don't know if it's a finished series or not, but these are the only two that I need to read at this time. I also picked up Falling by TJ Newman. I have heard a lot of amazing things about TJ Newman. I believe that she was a former flight attendant and so now she's using her experience as a flight attendant to write kind of like airplane based thriller suspense novels. So I believe that they're very high octane intense kind of thrillers. Her newest one, Drowning, is getting a lot of praise, but this one was on Book Outlet for a really good price. And so I was placing the order and I thought I might as well add it to my cart. So this is certainly one that I plan to get to in 2024 because I'm really interested to see what she can do. I typically don't love fast paced thrillers because they're so plot based that you don't really get any kind of connection to the characters, but I still hope that it's at least entertaining enough to make me kind of forget that and make me really enjoy the story. In that same Book Outlet order, I also had What Have We Done by Alex Finley, which I actually just read in December. So stay tuned for my thoughts on this one. And then the next three are the last of that book outlet order, A Ghost of Caribou by Alice Henderson. This is the third book in the Dr. Alex Carter series, which you all know if you've been here for any length of time, know that I'm really, really loving. It started with A Solitude of Wolverines followed by A Blizzard of Polar Bears. I absolutely love those two wintry isolation thrillers so, so much. I'm very excited to get into this one. And I do believe that there is going to be a new release in this series coming out next year, which I'm hyped for. I also picked up My Darkest Prayer by S.A. Cosby, which I believe was his debut. So this was also on book outlet and I wanted to snag it because I do want to read anything that man writes. I read Razorblade Tears and it was one of my favorite books of 2022. I have since read All the Sinners Bleed and it wasn't as strong for me as Razorblade Tears, but it was still a solid story. I've heard really great things about this one from Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand who recently read this and I'm excited to get to it when I have the opportunity to. I also have America's First Daughter by Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy. They wrote My Dear Hamilton, which was one of the best books that I've read so far this year. It was an amazing historical fiction that follows Eliza Hamilton and I believe this follows the daughter of Thomas Jefferson. I just loved what they did with My Dear Hamilton and even though I don't necessarily have as much investment or interest in what was her name? Oh, Patsy Jefferson. Even though I don't have as much interest in Patsy Jefferson, I still do think that this has an opportunity to be an amazing historical fiction and I'm excited to get to it. Now these next two are going to be very familiar to y'all because I have not stopped talking about them. The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young and Starling House by Alexi Harrow. These I believe were both, yeah, these were both October 2023 Book of the Month releases. I have read both. I have loved both immensely and I'm so very, very happy to have these. Also in that same order was When I'm Dead by Hannah Morrissey. I DNF'd that book. I have since unhauled it. I've sold it on Pango and it is already gone out of my house. So I don't even have it to show you. So it has been hauled and unhauled. I am also hauling and unhauling A Game of Fate by Scarlett St. Clair. I've mentioned this before, but I read the very first book in August for the Amazing Readathon and I really enjoyed it more than I expected to. So I thought, what the heck, let me go ahead and continue in the series. But in my heart, like in my instincts, I knew that I wasn't going to continue with it. I didn't love the first book enough to continue with it, but yet I still, I put it on my TBR. I put it on my wish list. This was sent to me as one of those gifts wish list events that I was part of and I actually started it. I got maybe two chapters in and then I was like, yeah, this is not what I want. I'm not a romance series girly. I'm a one and done hard hitting romance. And only if the first book in a romance series truly blows me away, am I going to continue with it going forward? Because I have really DNF'd a lot of romance series, like companion romance series. And so I just don't think I should be starting them anymore. So this is one that I'm hauling and unhauling and it will be on Pango soon. Also, it just occurred to me that I don't actually think I officially hauled The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden on my channel. I just talked about The Housemaid's Secret, but I think this one came after my last haul video. So I wanted to go ahead and talk about it here because both of them came in that box of book subscriptions. One came in the very first box and then the other one came in the second box. So I was very pleased about that because I ended up loving this one. So again, The Housemaid's Secret is on my TBR for 2021 and I'm looking forward to getting to it. I also have two beautiful editions of Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. This is the Illumicrate edition one. This is one that I actually purchased on my own when they released it. I wanted to see what Cassandra Clare could do with the adult age range because I kind of gave up on her Mortal Instruments series and I didn't continue with that and I have had no interest in reading any of her YA releases but when I heard that she was venturing into adult I kind of got a little bit excited so when Illumicrate announced this edition I jumped on it and I absolutely love this so there are the sprayed edges there's the back the naked hardcover of this is stunning look at that gold foiling and what does it say tales of the sorcerer king Laucantus Oris Yovit Lovit Yovit one of those two there's the spine it looks like an old leather bound book I love this design right here it's so beautiful and then here are the end pages and there's the back end pages as well. And then Fairy Loot actually ended up featuring this book. I believe it was in October. I shouldn't have been surprised. I should have been expecting it, but I wasn't. And I'm actually glad that I got the Illumicrate one because I enjoy it more than this one. This is the Fairy Loot special edition. So you can see those are probably the two main characters on the cover. Very glossy, very shiny. I do love these spray edges though. They are stunning. The naked hardcover is also beautiful. It is red with a lot of gold foiling. So both of these have stunning gold foiling on them. There's the spine. There's the back. 
and there are the end pages. And here are the back end pages as well. Next, I have a couple of Colleen Hoover's to haul. I have Heartbones. I have recently read this and unfortunately I didn't love this. I will be keeping it though because I want to collect basically all of Colleen Hoover's books, but this is probably one of my least favorite of hers to date. I also have Finding Perfect, which is a very teeny tiny little novella. This was sent to me again as part of the monthly like Facebook wish list gifting groups and she sent me this. I don't think she knew that it was a novella or that I would need to have read a bunch of other books before this. I don't know where it falls in the series, but it's a series of companion books. I don't necessarily think you need to read all of them or in any particular order, but there is a recommended reading order and I do plan to follow that. This is one of the novellas. It either falls in the middle or at the very end. So I have quite a ways to go before I can actually get to it, but I have hauled it. So I wanted to share it with you. I also have some more stunning special editions to share. First is Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. This is Fairy Loot's edition. This is kind of a spinoff to our Kingdom of the Wicked series, but to my understanding, you do not need to read anything in that series before jumping into this one. This is going to follow Prince Emby, I believe, whereas the original trilogy follows Prince Wrath. So I'm kind of excited to see what she does with Envy. So here is the cover. Here are the stunning sprayed edges. I absolutely love those. They're gorgeous. There's the back. I absolutely love the maroon color of this Naked Hard cover. It's like a Merlot, like a wine color. It's beautiful. There's some gold foiling. There's the spine and there's nothing on the back. And those are the end pages right there. Oh, and I just noticed there's a reversible dust jacket. So I will just kind of like hold it up here in front of my face so that you can see it. I also have the Fairy Loot edition of The Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzon. This was November's book, I believe, in the adult book only subscription box. This, I love the purple color of it, the gold foiling. There's the spine. There's the back. There are the end pages. And look at this naked hardcover, y'all. I cannot. They are just getting so good at the designs on these things. There's the front end pages and the back end pages. I also went ahead and picked up the holiday special edition release of Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This was a surprise release at first. It was like a mystery release, but then they ultimately revealed what it was. I wanted to pick this one up, even though I knew I was getting the fairy loot editions of both this and Iron Flame, because I knew I was going to be reading this soon. And I liked this a lot better than the original cover. And so I thought that I would go ahead and pick this up because I wasn't sure when I was going to get the fairy loot edition of Fourth Wing. So I'm glad that I have this. It's just basic sprayed edges. There's not a ton special about it outside of the cover. But like I said, I do love this cover more than the original. The naked hardcover, there is nothing special. And these are the end pages right here. Another gift I received was Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. I participated in an Elfster gifting event on Sid Bookworm's Patreon, and this was sent to me by my secret Santa. I'm sad that I can't get to this because I still have to read Royal Assassin, and I meant to read that this year and I did not, so hopefully that will be a top priority in 2024. But this, again, is the beautiful illustrated edition. She thick. She is not a small book. I really enjoyed reading the first book in this format, and I'm excited now to read books two and three in this format as well. And then the very last books of this haul are actually going to be the December book of the month selections that I made. A Winter in New York by Josie Silver. So this was actually an October release that they waited until December to feature. So I'm actually quite shocked that they did that for a release that came out two months ago, but I also have One Day in December in this edition. So I was happy to go ahead and snag this. I haven't read anything from Josie Silver since reading One Day in December, but this just sounds like a cute wintry romance and I'm here for it. I also snagged The Frozen River by Ariel Lawhon. I've actually never read anything by Ariel Lawhon, but if I enjoy this because I really liked the premise of it, it is a historical fiction. It is set in colonial like revolutionary times and it is based on the events of a real woman and if I enjoy this one I will be certainly looking into her backlist. I definitely already have this on hold at my library and I plan on getting to it as soon as possible. And the last one is Kate Alice Marshall's newest release No One Can Know. I really enjoyed her adult debut What Lies in the Woods. So when I saw this as an early release on Book of the Month I had to grab it. I had to snag it. I'm excited to get into it. I'm not going to read the synopsis because I kind of want to go in a little bit blind but this is one that I will definitely be putting on hold at my library as soon as it's available for me to do so. I'm definitely excited for this one. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are all of the books that I've hauled since the last haul that I did. It was either in August or September. I can't exactly remember when. And then with the exception of the Fairy Loot adult box and then the box of books that I have coming, that's really all that I plan to haul for the rest of the year. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that I've hauled in this video and what your thoughts are. I would love to know. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a sword emoji in honor of Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare. Y'all know that I love seeing your comments, even the emojis. I love the engagement and it definitely helps me in my channel so much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I am participating in Book Miss Meeting from December 1st through December 25th. You should see one video upload a day from me leading up until Christmas. And if you don't want to miss any of that content, please be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Y'all know that I love connecting with you in all of my videos and on any of the other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all.